For four million shillings in the Kenyan market, if you're looking for an executive sedan, what could you get? Maybe a B8 Audi A5, possibly even one of the newer C-classes, or if you're a Beamer guy, a 3 Series and 5 Series of old. But what if I told you there is an option that you do not know about yet? I'm Wemo, this is Conversations, and that is the 2019 Peugeot 508 GT Live. Before I talk about the engine of this car, please remember to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification button so that you can get updated when we drop some more goodies. Now, this car, the 508, comes equipped with a 1600cc four-cylinder turbo petrol branded as the PureTech engine by Peugeot. The engine is transversely mounted in the front of the car. That means it saves a lot more space on the front end while also being generally lighter. The engine in itself is also direct fuel injection, which has loads of added benefits, including the fact that you don't really have much lag when the fuel is fed directly into the cylinders. All told, this car puts out 178 horsepower, which is modest, but good enough to get the job done, particularly of a car of this stature, and 250 newton meters of torque. Again, absolutely fantastic. All that is mated to an eight-speed automatic gearbox, which has aspects of the ICEN gearbox that's seen in quite a lot of European cars. The gears in this car, when driving through some of the um, car's modes, are relatively they're interesting they're very unique where when climbing up the gears in automatic mode the car always seems to know the perfect gear that you need to be in particularly in comfort mode or even in some aspects of the sport mode although when you're manually shifting gears and climbing up and down the gears they can be a little bit laggy and a little bit lazy all told the synergy between the gearbox and the engine is quite well done by Peugeot. That one, 100% in my books, solid 8 out of 10. But fun fact, this 1600cc in this car is also known as the Prince engine, codenamed the Prince engine. For those of you who know a lot about the Prince engine, you understand that this engine is the same one that's shared um, by most BMW cars, particularly the 1 series and even some of the 3 series. This was a collaborative project between Peugeot and uh, BMW quite a few years ago. So meaning that uh, the time that this engine has been in existence, it has been refined and worked on before it eventually made its way into this car. That means this iteration that's particularly in this car is quite, um, it's well refined. It's been very well fine tuned. That means you tend not to have too many issues, particularly with the car. Although you do have to keep up with the regular service intervals. Like for example, the belt needs to be changed every 140,000 kilometers or so, but nothing too much. And also a little bit of oil consumption. But then again, it's a pretty, pretty well-built motor. I generally quite like how they've implemented it into this particular car. <laughs> In 2019, the 508 was meant to be Peugeot's flagship sedan, which it actually was. This car was meant to spearhead Peugeot in its revamp as a car brand and as an icon in general. When the designers walked into the room, they had one idea in mind, hit hard, particularly with the design. And just by taking a look at this magnificent car, they definitely hit hard. Starting out from the front, there is one thing that definitely catches your attention, and it's got to be this, the lights. Beautifully laid out, you have these daytime running lights that just droop down from the edge of this light assembly, which in my opinion, they kind of resemble fangs. They build onto that aggressive sort of um, futuristic look that Peugeot has been trying to go for. These lights illuminate so well, both during the day and at night, particularly at night, they're very attention catching. Lastly, you have these um, lights over here within the headlight assembly, which are projector beams, they're LEDs. And when I tell you these are basically like the sun, when you're driving at night and you have your high beams on, there is nothing you can't see. It peers into the depths of your soul. Moving on to this center grill right here. You have these little checkerboard pattern type 
um, arranged metallic pieces which are polished chrome and they catch the light ever so perfectly they look like little diamonds when you're driving down the road now the bumper flows down seamlessly it's a very beautiful big swooping bumper that just it's very imposing it's very dominating lastly down here towards the front you have these massive air intakes and this beautiful body colored lip coming up towards the hood you have this 508 emblem put front and center it's like Peugeot is saying we are here and I generally do feel like they are now the sharp lines that are you know seen at the front of this car definitely do travel back you have this massive bonnet with these beautiful power domes representative of a sort of BMW style and one thing that you definitely notice is there is no wiper um, fluid jets that are poking out ruining the lines of this car and that's because of a very neat feature that Peugeot implemented in this car similar to the newer Mercedes you have water coming up through the wiper blades I'm sure Mbugua the person who makes me look good in these videos will add a clip of the wipers in action now moving right down here you have these lovely diamond cut alloys that just shine perfectly 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 now these are 18 inch wheels that come standard in this car wrapped in this lovely bit of rubber from michelin these tires fantastic they just look so beautiful they suit the lines of this car the wheels may look a bit busy but in my opinion they definitely do suit the whole ethos of this car just sharp angular lines now again with these lines that flow down towards the side of this car it's fantastic now Something that many people don't know is when conceptualizing this car in 2012, Peugeot did not have the technology to stamp out one big piece of metal like they did in this car. That was a challenge taken up by Peugeot's Metallic Division Works, which the whole idea was for them to be able to stamp out one big piece of steel into these, you know, these nice, have these nice lines that are just pressed in beautifully. Now, obviously, through hours and hours, years actually of research and development they were finally able to achieve it with that now Peugeot has some of the deepest grooves in the stamping which is sort of industry leading right so coming up through the a pillar this nice flowing lines that also are exhibited down here towards the door it's very the angles just catch the light so nicely like the lines in this car flow seamlessly but similar to some of the Audis that I'd mentioned before, you have these pillarless, you know, sorry, frameless windows that are exhibited in this car. They look absolutely fantastic. Again, on this door, you have this nice contrasting color side mirror. But one thing I don't like about the implementation of um, these frameless windows is how they did it in the back. Again, you have this beautiful swooping line, but if I was to do that, you have this bit sticking out why Peugeot why because in my opinion that kind of ruins the line of the car just a little bit but not too bad still looks fantastic again moving down towards the rear quarter of this car you have this lovely GT line badge stamped over there just so you don't forget what equipment you're driving these lines my goodness they're just fantastic Fantastic. Coming into the rear of this car, my goodness, this car is as beautiful at the back as it is from the front. Just look at how these lines collate towards the back and just, it's, it's just beautiful, man. Whatever those guys were paid to design this car, I, I personally don't think it was enough. Now, um, quickly, this car has a very peculiar, interesting, standing out shape. Again, similar to the Audi A5. It has this fastback design where the roof sort of swoops down very sharply into the rear of this car. Now, starting off with the boot lid, as you can see, it's very sharp and angular at the top, giving this sort of false ducktail spoiler type. It edges out just slightly over the rear of this car before doubling back very quickly in itself. This bar right here it almost looks like a complete and solid light bar but it's not you have these three lights at the back which someone told me they look very mustang like especially when you're driving down the road particularly when you're braking now the way that peugeot designed these lights were very intentional when the car is off it looks as though the led strips are suspended in ice but the moment you turn this car on those lights come alive it's just so vibrant it's deep the red is rich it looks fantastic this boot 
cutting back on itself it's massive it's swooping just like the front bumper but it looks stunning even though it's smooth and rounded it still has those sharp elements and sharp edges all along it going down towards the bottom end of this car you have your reflector lights right there your parking sensors over here and then you have these two real exhausts hello mercedes i don't understand why you have to give us a full shroud around the exhaust just give me two pipes i'd be very happy with that if they're real there's no need for quad tips if they're fake last but not least tying in the rear of this car perfectly together is this nice polite polite looking diffuser it might not be <laughs> completely uh, functional but it does look damn good now let's get into the back of this car this car has a hands-free sort of um, boot opening mechanism I just swoop my leg underneath the back like that I'll do it again because it seems not to be working now okay Peugeot has decided not to work this time but if that does not work you have a release right there that opens the back of this car an electronic tailgate and as you can see the crew has some of its stuff in the back over here that's just to exemplify how massive this boot is it's extremely spacious and under here if i'm to lift this um mat just a little bit you do have a spare it's a space saver but it's better than some of those fiddly pressure kits um puncture kits that most of these newer cars come with now at the back you also have a 12 volt outlet right here so you can power some of your equipment if need be additionally it's just insanely spacious you also have a subwoofer at the back over here Peugeot did know its target demographic when making this car it knew that it's targeting a very youthful you know midlife type of person who fine you have a family you need the space you need the practicality but at the same time you're also somebody who's probably likely to be going on a couple of road trips especially for us Kenyans who have this park and chill culture this car would suit it perfectly you have a massive subwoofer here no need for you to you know carry your bluetooth speaker around with you wherever you go just all you need to do is get to the park spot you know with the guys with the mamas you're perfectly fine with that open up the back of this car and the focal sound system in this car my goodness it is crisp it is sharp well designed the audio engineering in this car is magnificent so you have enough storage back here for all the nyamachoma the small goods that you want to carry in the back as well as a couple of coolers for the boys and again the focal sound system they really did think about everything when designing this car now let's quickly jump into the interior because this car is as beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside jumping into the interior of this car for the longest while Peugeot had always backed up and emphasized on their interest to break into the luxury car market and as much as in my opinion they've nailed that from the exterior styling the interior aspect matters a lot for this to be classified as an executive sedan there are certain things that need to be accomplished now this isn't your typical Mercedes where every inch of the interior is wrapped in leather wood and metal but the materials used in here are premium they feel fantastic you have this double layered or double stacked sort of dash design where the top layer is soft touch materials not exactly leather but it's done in such a way that you would barely even notice it now even though it's black it does have this contrasting stitch right here and in the top layer is where your ventilation mounts are placed uh, your ventilation outlets rather and they look very well implemented in this car they're not an ISO they don't stick out now swooping down towards this side you have this beautiful surround where ingressed into it you have your um your dormitory coming down to the second level of this dashboard it does look pretty nice there's this carbon fiber stitch here but it's not really real carbon fiber it's more of just like i said carbon fiber stitch with a bit of a foam backing now on this same second level is where you have your infotainment screen that is you know situated there it's an eight inch touch sensitive display as you can see here but my one gripe with it is that it can be a bit laggy from the time when i press something it's not as instantaneous as some of the other manufacturers out there it does have a little bit of input lag now this peugeot in particular was one of the first generations of something called iDrive which when someone says iDrive or iPeugeot it's kind of giving apple 
right? iPhone, iPod, iPad, etc., etc. So it makes you think that it's sort of futuristic and seamless, which to some extent they have delivered on that. It is a very um, friendly user interface. It's very intuitive and it has everything that you could possibly need right there. Although from my use of it, there are some of those issues about input delay, input lag, which was later down the road refined. The whole user interface is very, it's very seamless. It's full of, you know, functions and usability. Like as you can see me pressing on these keyboard style buttons over here, I'm able to quickly scroll through some of the presets and some of the functions over here. This car does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, as much as it does have its own user interface there, I highly doubt that many people who use this car will be using that because most people are just going to plug in their phones and then end up using the CarPlay or the Android Auto. Moving down towards this lovely center console, you do you can see this pass right here. And at the back over here, if I can just quickly get my phone, you have a functional wireless charger. There's a lot of storage space here. You have a cubby right there and you have this sort of piano style lacquer finish in the center console. You also have your drive mode select button here, your engine start stop here, and then this very, you know, weird looking but very oddly ergonomical gear select here. Very typical, very standard. Don't need to dive too much into that except for this manual button that you have here. When you're gonna switch the car into manual mode, your electronic park brake here and these cup holders which do illuminate at night or in the dark furthermore you have more storage in here which is very illuminated the light in here is so bright if you're driving down at night and you open up this cubby there's a nice glow on the interior of the car coming towards this steering wheel it is just it's very odd it's quirky it's french you expect the french to be quirky and they definitely delivered on that you have your massive paddle shifters here which don't move with the steering wheel like most other cars do they're situated in place you have your stalks coming out from right here and the steering wheel once again it's a very odd shape i wouldn't even know what to call this but you have your peugeot badge on the first element of this and your gt line on the second element of it very nice easy to use easy to reach steering controls it's nice it's very small too it almost gives this sort of go-kart type feel when you're driving the car more on that later going down towards the door bins and the door cards right here you have soft touch materials again the angular lines from the outside seem to find their way to on the inside your focal speakers two at the front top part two at the bottom part and again four more in the rear of this car it's just loaded with speakers that's why the sound is so crisp last but definitely not least are these seats as you can see the very bucket type seats the deep the very comfortable they have very big um bolsters both on the bottom part and on the top part and the seats are ventilated heated and massaging <laughs> do i feel like they've done enough for them to be classified as an executive sedan particularly on the materials used and the finishing to the interior yes yes i do let's feel how she drives the driving experience of this car is really really quite an experience it definitely is an experience i'd spoken about earlier how this steering wheel is quite small it gives the car a go-kart feel it's very nimble for this being an executive sedan it's quite long over 4,000 millimeters long the handling of this car is really really it's been well fine-tuned now this car comes equipped with a mcpherson strut not a double wishbone as some of the of its european counterparts but i feel as though you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about the McPherson strut that it's uh, very basic, but not in this car. Definitely not in this car. This does come equipped with adaptive, with an adaptive suspension system, which means when you're rolling through all four of the car's different modes, the suspension does feel different. It's noticeable. It's not imaginary. So, for example, if you're in sport mode, the car feels very stiff the suspension is a bit stiff not unbearably stiff but just enough where you do not feel the car's excessive lean throughout some of its corners like the way i'm taking a corner over here although i'm not in really high speeds i'm at very moderate speeds it does feel quite nice additionally if i roll 
the driving mode into something like comfort the suspension softens and i'm able to take bumps more comfortably and i'm able to take the bumps more smoothly i don't feel a lot of the you know uneven surfaces of the road too much it doesn't translate into the interior cabin additionally the car's driving angle it's very sporty as i mentioned earlier with the bucket seats you do sit quite low in the car but it's not too low where you can't see ahead especially considering how relatively long this front end bonnet is it does feel really really good now that the car is in sport mode and i have a decent stretch of road ahead of me oh the accelerator right under my foot just the gentlest you know bit of pressure and it goes now the car in manual mode again like i mentioned earlier it is a little bit lazy it takes more pressure than i think is necessary for me to be able to roll up some of these gears but still fantastic the pick is absolutely beautiful and it just goes and goes and goes and it keeps on pulling oh lovely lovely but now this is all speculative this is all you know feel let me get mbugo and fabian in here and let's 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 ask them what they think about this car oh now we finally have the boys we have mbugo in the front seats and then we have Fabian in the back now. All the boys are in the car. Talk to me, Baba. What do you think? I'm happy to be in this car. Uh huh. Literally, this car. I, I believe this is one of the best looking cars I've been into so far at a cheaper price. Uh, okay. Yeah, you agree I with totally that? I totally agree with that. The bucket seats. Oh my god. Hey! <laughs> this is a car that you can go for a long journey. Now, it's a choker. And also, the fact that as a passenger, not just you as a driver, I also gave my son seats. Other than that, I think in terms of the bra pambele, in terms of plastic, I don't think it's much plastic. I love the foam feeling. Uh -huh. yeah? Right, right. It's a right. bit scratchy, but okay. Obviously, look at you. I'm a in Guinea. Cutting corners, same as Mercedes, though. That's true. Yeah. So I, I believe it's a nice looking car. Really cup holders, position of cup holders. Other than that. How do you feel when you take a car? What do you feel? You like? Honestly, uh -huh. I like a lot about this car. Almost everything. It's just, it's a lovely experience, you know. Like the way you said, this is a car I would enjoy to drive for very long distances. But my only issue for it is some of the visibility. These A pillars, they're yeah. really wide. So they're it's, wide. it's a bit obstructing. And then even in the back, because it's a fast back design. And then, remember, somehow I feel like you don't have a 360 or okay, car. I would have 360s around you. So it's not giving you the yeah. blind side, you know. But even though, like you see these, uh, the side mirrors, they're really, really big. Uh -huh. And it also comes with um, the lane, the lane uh, blind spot awareness, sorry. Oh. So just at the edge of the side mirrors, okay. is that small indicator. In case, so in case anything. Anything. Yeah. 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 exactly. Other than that, I don't have much to add. I love the infotainment system. I love the look and the sound. I wish maybe let you your copyright yeah. reasons. Yeah, yeah. We could have played the music on this song, but I think next time I'll figure out how to do that. Exactly. So that at least to kiss my ear, what was your only cut All right. So Fab, how does it feel <laughs> at the back of this car? Talk to me. Yes, uh, Mama. Uh huh. I have a lot of complaints actually. Hey. Alright, go on. <laughs> so, um, there's a lot of, uh, okay, not a lot, but uh, I think the passenger space mm -hmm. uh, in the 508 mm -hmm. is quite limited, mm -hmm. especially to my six feet bros and gullies. Um, in terms of the headroom, I think the sloping roof line. Right. Kind of enough. Right. If Bobby send me the most the, the, the good Okay, okay, well, let me talk the, about the, the pros. positive. Let side. me talk about the pros, okay. Right. okay. Um uh you get uh, two speakers mm -hmm. uh on each side of the door. Mm -hmm. uh, both doors have two speakers which makes it four for the for what we pay lift. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. I also uh, believe you, you have you have two USB chargers. Uh, there's two USB chargers over here. Yeah. Um, now these lights here, touch sensitive. 
think it has a nice ring to it. Okay, okay. But for us, Kumbele has no opinion. No, but also that I think that's a Kumbele. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, okay. Then you have to leave to go at least Kumbele ah. and something, but... <laughs> <laughs> you are complaining that you, uh-huh. for the real person, at you have massage. You have to leave, you have to take a massage. Come on. I mean, I've been walking. Before I pay a lift, I'm going to take a massage. Some massage would do me some good, man. Yeah. <laughs> me, I think stories in the coming sana the most important thing i think to do is drive this car to 100 right to one every vehicle perfect all right boys are we ready i think we're ready my drug is ready exactly we're in sport mode in sport mode calm me down back boost saying go Imagine 27 out of 30. That's a beautiful car, man. It's a beautiful car. I think, can you do the outro? Yeah. Once again, for 4 million shillings, when comparing this car with others in its class, particularly when it comes to reliability, practicality, but most importantly, looks, I think you understand why I'd take this over most. 